Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll give you a short introduction to or overview of Lightroom. Then in the next video, I'll explain how Lightroom works with a catalog. This introduction isn't intended to be a hands-on video. I'll be clicking through things pretty quickly and not explaining the how-to. Now, Lightroom has modules for performing different tasks. We start out in the library module where you'll organize, manage, and search for your photos. When you open Lightroom for the first time, you'll have no photos in Lightroom. You'll use the Import dialog to bring photos in, whether they're on memory cards or already on your hard drives. Because it's for photographers, Lightroom allows you to import and work with all of our major file types, RAW files, JPEGs, TIFFs, PSDs, and videos as well. Your goal will be to get all of your photos into Lightroom. This is just a small demonstration catalog, but I have well over 30,000 photos in my main Lightroom catalog. Having them all in Lightroom allows me to enjoy them. Once you've imported photos, here in the library module, you'll be able to cull through them, assigning pick or reject flags, stars, and or color labels to signal to you which ones you like and which ones you don't. Then you can assign keywords, which you'll be able to find your photos based on, and you can do face tagging to assign people keywords if you have Lightroom 6. Lightroom is designed to help you work efficiently. You can do tasks to individual photos. You can also select many photos and perform tasks with all of them at once. You can also view additional information about your photos here in the metadata panel. For example, I could go to Camera Information to view information about exposure. You'll also search for photos here. I'll search my entire catalog for my five-star flower images. Now, whether I had 1,100 or 30,000 photos in my catalog, Lightroom would return those photos almost instantly. Here in the Folders panel, you can also reorganize your photos in folders. For example, I'll drag this folder down into 2009, and I'll move this individual photo into a different folder. Once I've imported a shoot and decided which photos I'm going to keep, next I would go to the Map module to assign location information. I'll select some photos here, and I'll drag them to the map. That automatically assigns city, state, country, and sometimes more information that I can search for my photos based on. I can also then use the map module to get to photos from a particular location. Next, I go to the develop module to edit my photos. I won't take the time in this video to go through all of the tools here in the develop module, but suffice it to say that you have a professional set of editing tools here. One of the greatest things about developing in Lightroom is that all of the work is non-destructive. It doesn't get baked into your original file. I'll explain more how that works in the next video. The implication, though, is that no matter what you do to your photo, crop it down to just a few pixels, turn it green, etc., you can always undo your work five minutes from now or five years from now. So feel free to experiment without fear of ruining your photos. The develop module also has tools for helping you to work as efficiently as possible. You can create and save presets or download presets from the web to apply looks that you like. Here's a preset I created that adds a white border. You can also work on multiple photos at once. I'll select all five of these photos and I'll increase exposure. That happened to all five photos. I'll change that back. After editing a photo in Lightroom, some people some of the time choose to do further editing in Photoshop or another image editing program. I would recommend that you learn all of Lightroom's developed tools really well, and then if there's more you want to be able to do, look into Photoshop or other programs or plugins. But you'll open your file into that other program from right here in Lightroom. You won't have to close Lightroom and then go open Photoshop and look for your file. You'll choose Edit In, you'll do your Photoshop work, 
and then your Photoshop file will be saved right back here to Lightroom. So you'll have a very integrated workflow. After editing your photos, you can go to any of the four output modules to create output. I could go to the book module to create a photo book that I could then have printed by Blurb, which is a photo book publishing company, or I could publish it as a PDF to share electronically. You can create slideshows here in the slideshow module that you could play from within Lightroom or export as videos along with music or as PDFs. You can create professional prints. Here's a print design that I could print here from within Lightroom, or I could save it as a JPEG to share electronically. And then you can create web galleries that you could publish to your website. Now, even if you're not interested in creating these specific types of output, there'll be lots of situations where you want to share your photos. You'll do that from the library module. You can export copies of your photos, for example, JPEG copies, to have someone else print, or to share online or email to people. You can publish directly to Facebook, Flickr, and other services. You can email photos directly from Lightroom here. And finally, if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you can sync your collections of photos to and from Lightroom Mobile on your mobile devices and to Lightroom Web so that you can send people links to view, comment, and like your photos at a private link on the web. So you can do a tremendous number of tasks here in Lightroom. It's designed to be an all-in-one program for photographers. Now this video series, The Fundamentals and Beyond, covers library, develop, and map, where you organize and manage your photos, edit your photos, and share your photos. My video series, Producing Great Output, covers book, slideshow, print, and web, as well as all of the concepts that are critical to getting great quality output, such as how to calibrate your monitor, what color spaces are, printing with profiles, JPEG quality and compression, some topics that seem very complex, but that don't have to be. So this concludes the introduction to Lightroom. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how Lightroom works with a catalog. I consider that to be the most important video in this series. I'll explain the catalog, what importing and exporting really mean, and how Lightroom accomplishes working non-destructively. Understanding these will help you to avoid some really painful mistakes that users often make.